All right, guys, so I'm going to go through some of the multiple choices that you have requested, starting with where we left off on yesterday, whatever day it was, on number 83. So the question was, the graph above gives the velocity in feet per second of a car for 0 to 8 seconds, which is the best estimate for distance traveled. So if we integrate the velocity, we will get distance, but we don't have a function for velocity, so we're going to have to try a Riemann sum. And I started with making a left Riemann sum because it's an overestimate. Um, if you don't remember, just start drawing the, the rectangles and you'll see that it goes over. What was hard about making the rectangles with a base of 1 was knowing where these points were located. So if I zoom in here, you'll see that this first left height is at 50 coming down. So that's 1 times 50. This next height is going to stop right here at about, I, mean, I just called it 49, go out, so that's 1 times 49. This one is going to hit by the left hit right here, I called that 48, I could be completely off, and down that's 48. This one over here is at 40, this one here I guesstimated 23, here I guesstimated 15, because my base, my widths are 1, so it's height times 1, height times 1. Here I guesstimated 8, and here I guesstimated 3. So clearly that's an overestimate, and if I add all of those areas that I just got together, I get, if I add all those up with my calculator, I get 236. Okay, so that's not really a good, um, well it is an overestimate. Alright, it is an overestimate, so you could say that the answer then is D. If you wanted to try a, just one more, just to confirm, I would do a base of 2, and I'll do that one in, in green. So if we do a base of 2 with a left Riemann sum, okay, let's do a base of 2, so that brings me with that green rectangle, that's 50 times 2 is 100. Do another base of 2, start with the left, hit that curve, go out, come down, Let's say that one's 45, because it looks like it's about 45. So 45 times 2, which is 90. Let's do it again. Hit the curve here. Go out, come down. Let's say that is 23 or 25. Let's say 25. Let's say 25 times 2, that's 50. And hit this. Go out, come down. Let's say that is also 5 times 2. Let's call that 10. So that's 60 and 90 is 150. There I got 250. And that's also an overestimate. 250 is an overestimate, so 210 has got to be the answer. So it looks like what you're being assessed here is on how to be able to take Riemann sums, how to check a couple options, knowing that your options are overestimates. So since these are overestimates, the answer cannot be 260, but does have to be closer to 210. I was also asked about 88, which I know we did in class, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. A person whose height is 6 feet is walking away from the base of a street light along a path at a rate of 4 feet per second. So when this is the situation, we want to create the similar right triangles. And we want to go ahead and set, let's call this lamp post is 15 this height is 6, and these are constant. The lamp post is not increasing or decreasing. The height of the person is not increasing or decreasing. We have this piece right here, which is increasing or decreasing because it's the value at which this person is moving. So this amount between the distance between the light post and the person, let's call that x. And that is changing, so that will have a dx dt. And let's call this amount from the person and the shadow, that is also changing, and let's call that y. And since these are similar right triangles, we can set up a proportion. 15 is to x plus y, as 6 is to y. Leg is to leg, as leg is to leg. That is our equation. We will take the derivative of that, but I would want to actually make it a little bit easier first. So let's go ahead and do cross products, 15y is equal to 6x plus 6y. Take the derivative, 15 dy dt is equal to 6 dx dt. 
plus 6 dy dt. You were given dx dt because you were told that they are walking at a rate of 4 feet per second. So that's the distance between the lamp and the person is changing uh, 4 feet per second. So that is 4. And we are solving for dy dt, which is the rate at which the person's shadow is lengthening. So we are looking for dy dt. Okay, the next question I was asked about is number 25 on the diagnostic. The position in meters of a particle moving on the x-axis is given by the following equation, and we're looking for the average velocity. Remember that average velocity is the rate of change of position. Average velocity is the rate of change of position. Instantaneous velocity, or velocity, is s prime of t. So instantaneous velocity is s prime of t, or v of t, which is s prime of t. Average velocity, slope of the secant line, is the rate of change of s of t. So we have average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is the derivative. Average velocity is the rate of change, not of velocity, but it is the rate of change of the position. So s of 0 minus s of 3 all over 0 minus 3 will get you the average velocity. All right, this question was a little bit funky. So it says, let f be a continuous function on the closed x intervals from 0 to 3. Now, if f of x, which I think this might have been missed here, if f of x is between 3 and 6, then what is the greatest possible value of the definite integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx? Okay, f of x is between 3 and 6. f of x is between 3 and 6. So if we want the greatest possible value of this integral, the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx, if we want the greatest possible value, then why don't we put the largest possible f of x that we can have? Why don't we put the largest possible f of x in there to get the greatest possible value of this integral? The biggest f of x could be is 6. So instead of the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx, why don't we write the integral from 0 to 3 of 6 dx? Since this is the largest possible value for f of x, Let's integrate that, so that is 6x evaluated from 0 to 3, which is 6 times 3 minus 6 times 0, which is 18. So the largest possible value is 18, because the largest possible value for f of x is 6, which means if we take the integral of that, the answer, largest possible answer you can get is going to be 18. Okay, in the diagnostic, we needed, uh, I was asked, I'm sorry, to do 38. So I am integrating x times 4 to the negative x squared dx. Looks like a u sub, so I'm going to get a set u equal to negative x squared. du is negative 2x dx. There is my x dx right there. I don't have a negative 2, so I'm going to multiply by negative 1 half. The integral of 4 to the u du. All right, there is a rule for this. There is a rule for the integral of 4 to the u du. I know we didn't drill this rule, but got to look it up. And it is negative 1 half times 1 over ln of a times a. And uh, that's the answer, plus c. And there's a rule, like I said, for the integral integral of a to the u du is equal to 1 over ln of a times a to the u. And you can find that in your rules on the back of your manual. And don't forget that negative 1 half from when we did the u substitution. All right, number 41 on the diagnostic asked us to find the average value of f of x equals sine of 3x on the interval from 0 to pi over 3. Average value is the integral from a to b of f of x dx all over b minus a. It's kind of like the formula for slope, where this is 
basically capital F of B minus capital F of A, but we do not know what capital F is. Average value, again, is the integral from A to B of F of X dx over B minus A. That's something you have to have memorized. We use that if they ask us to find like average velocity and we don't know the position function. So we can integrate the velocity from A to B over B minus A because the integral of the velocity is the position at B minus the position at A. So we use average value um, to do things like that. So we want to integrate, and this is a calculator question because it has the calculator icon, from 0 to pi over 3 of sine of 3x, and that's all over pi over 3 minus 0. And you do have the use of, uh, of the calculator on this question, even though the integral of sine of 3x is not complicated to do. Um, you do, have, you do have the option for use of your calculator here. But the answer is in terms of pi, so it looks like your calculator isn't going to be very helpful. So let's integrate this. u is equal to 3x, du is 3 dx, so this is 1 third. The integral of sine, of positive sine, is negative cosine, so negative cosine of 3x evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. All right, let me make some space here. So that is negative one-third multiplied to cosine of 3 times pi over 3. Okay. Minus cosine of 3 times 0. There's my numerator. All over pi over 3. Okay, so again, the integral of sine of 3x is negative one-third cosine of 3x. Evaluated from 0 to pi over 3, I pulled out my negative one-third and did cosine of 3 times b minus cosine of 3 times a, because it's f of b minus f of a. That gets me just cosine of pi, which is negative 1, minus cosine of 0, which is 1, and I'm multiplying that by negative one-third. So it looks like I've got a positive two-thirds in my numerator. I'm dividing that by pi over 3, which is also the same as multiplying by 3 over pi, to get my final answer of 2 over pi. All right. So base of a sol... Oh, I'm sorry. This is diagnostic number 43. The base of a solid is a region in the first quadrant bound by the x-axis, the y-axis, and the line x plus 3y is equal to 9. So this is our Play-Doh. All right. And what we're doing to that region is we're putting cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis. Um, and they're going to be isosceles right triangles with the hypotenuse in the xy plane. So that means that when I bring the isosceles right triangles into here, my hypotenuse is going into the Play-Doh. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to develop my 45-45-90 triangle, um, which is right here. And in a 45-45-90, these are the same. And this is x square root of 2, or let's call it side, side, and side square root of 2. So side, side, and side square root of 2. Okay? And because I'm able to do this, I'm going to give you a visual here. We're going to take this, and we're going to put the cross sections perpendicular perpendicular to the y axis with the hypotenuse in the plato watch turn this around there's my hypotenuse going into the plato and we're going perpendicular to the y axis so we're going to put our our triangles in this way so we're going to have one there, and then we'll make it smaller and put another one in there, and put another one in there, and put another one in there, and build the solid that way. So we're going to put all these triangles in. You know, Imagine each of these is a bunch of triangles coming in this way. So hopefully this visual will help you kind of create your own two-dimensional visual of what's going on. All right, so the area, we want to integrate area to get volume. Area of a triangle is one-half base times height, okay? This is the base of our triangle. 
This is the height of our triangle because we have to look at the triangle inside the Play-Doh. Okay? So, the base of our triangle is from function, I mean from axis to function, from axis to function. So the base of our triangle is going to be x plus 3y equals 9. It's going to be that line, the y value of that line. If x is this, y is this. If x is this, y is that. If x is this, and all of those are the bases of that triangle, is the y value of, of that line. So the base is uh, the y value, which is y is equal to uh, 9 minus x all over 3, or um, I, I don't know, you know, what do we call it? 3 minus 1 third x. Oh, wait, but that makes it a dx problem. This is going to be a dy problem, so let's solve for x. x is equal to 9 minus 3y. There we go. How did I know it was a dy problem and not a dx problem? Because we are moving this guy along the y-axis as we put infinitely um, many amounts of isosceles right triangles per perpendicular to the y-axis. We're traveling along the y-axis. So it's a dy problem, which means that my base should be in terms of y. Now we want to tackle this height. Well, once I created that height, you'll see a side measure here and a side measure here that are that are equal. This is an S and this is an S. So this whole triangle, if you look at it this way, this is an isosceles triangle, S, S, S square root of 2. And if we remember the height of an isosceles triangle, which we can find right here. Oh boy, come on. Right there. There we go. The height of an isosceles triangle is half of the base. The height of an isosceles triangle is half of the base. So let's say that one more time. The height of that isosceles triangle is half of the base, which we already found the base. So the height is equal to 1 half of 9 minus 3y. So in an isosceles triangle, in any isosceles triangle, where this is equal to this, and here's you know your, your base of your isosceles, your height, which comes down here, is half of the base. So now we're ready to put our area formula together so that we can integrate. Let's leave you here. So our area, if we move all this out of the way, area is equal to one half base times the height, which is one half times nine minus three y. We can, this is all multiplying, so we can express the area as one fourths. 9 minus 3y squared. So the volume is going to be equal to the integral, we'll do our bounds in a second, of 1 fourth times 9 minus 3y squared. And the bounds are going to go from, look at it, your y-axis, from 0 to 3. So we're integrating from 0 to 3. We're integrating 1 fourth times 9 minus 3y squared. We need to remember that in an isosceles triangle, the height is equal to half of the base. To give you a better rule for that, I took this triangle and tried to draw it out here. Dropping the height, this used to be the 90, that was on the top. Dropping the height, so this is your height, there's your S, there's your S. We're focusing over here on this guy, why is this height half of the base? Well, let's go ahead and say S square root of 2 divided by 2 is this height. I'm sure that you can use on your own now your 45, 45, 90 rule on this green triangle to prove that this times square root of 2 is going to give you S. And this is also going to be S square root of 2 over 2. Just this, just this, uh, just that green triangle right there following the 45, 45, 90 rule where this is the hypotenuse and this hypotenuse is s, then this must be s square root of 2 over 2. So hopefully this was a little bit uh, trickier just because it was an isosceles right with the hypotenuse on the xy plane. But if you haven't noticed, you, can, you have some memorization here that you can remember. In an isosceles right, if the hypotenuse is on the xy plane, the height is always half of the base. Okay? And your base is going to be your 
hypotenuse, which is going to be your function. So you have some memorization that you can do there. I would look up some more of these problems. I would Google a uh, base of a solid, isosceles right triangle, hypotenuse in the XY plane, find problems like this, and see if you can do a few more on your own. All right, the last question I was asked about is number 89 on the multiple choice 2012. Particle moves along a line so that its acceleration is given by the following function. The particle's velocity at t equals 0 is 5. What is the particle? What is the velocity of the particle at t equals 3? If they gave us acceleration and they're asking us for velocity, I'm going to have to integrate. They told us that t equals 0 is 5, so that gave us they gave us that v of 0 is equal to 5. So why don't we integrate from 0? And they want us to find v of 3, what v of 3 is equal to. Why don't we integrate from 0 to 3? If we integrate the acceleration from, z from 0 to 3, we're going to get v of 3 minus v of 0 because the integral of acceleration is velocity. And if we go from 0 to 3, we get that v of we get that that is equal to v of 3 minus v of 0. So I'm going to add v of 0 to both sides because I know what v of 0 is. So in my calculator, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3 of the acceleration. And this is a calculator question, so you're expected to not integrate this by hand. Add that to the 5 that we were given. That will give us v of 3. So in my calculator, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3. Take that answer, add 5, and that answer will give me v of 3. Again, because the integral from 0 to 3 of the acceleration is equal to v of 3 minus v of 0, and this was given.